This is my last night in Curacao before I head out for Panama. The passage should take about a week and the first half of it's going to be really awesome. I'll probably be going five or six knots downwind, wing and wing. Then the wind pretty much totally dies away and that's not me picking a bad weather window, that's just how it is when you approach Panama. It's really hard to catch good wind. So if you're doing it all at once like me, you're probably going to get a dead spot, which means motoring at two to three knots and having to be on the tiller constantly. But I'm so looking forward to being at sea again. I just really love it. I feel like it kind of... I'm off, uh, of leaving course, Curacao behind. Of picked. course, it's full of thunderstorms, lightning, but in the distance. I don't want to knock on wood. Um, I think it's all going to pass me by. Maybe I'll get one or two little squalls. reasons I converted my head sail from roller furling to hank on is that it's super easy to take it down if you need to. All I have to do is just open the halyard and the thing drops. I can drop it in less than 10 seconds going downwind. I can drop it on any point of sail and without warning. So what I usually do is wait until I can see the front of the squall almost hitting my boat before I drop it because I hate being underpowered and it kind of makes an exciting game. The first system that hit was just lots of rain and wind but nothing crazy. I maybe could have left the head sail up but you never know with these things. It's always better to strike early and you can always put it up again. But. I was pretty happy to just have the main, that way I didn't really have to focus on, oh, am I going to get a giant squall that's going to fuck me up? Just another just the first squall, I thought I was set, and then <laughs> half an hour later I turned around and saw this beast lurking behind me. Damn I it. Want it to look <laughs> it's not <now>. over. <laughs> this one looked, you know, bad. It had a lot of white puffies above it, but there was a pretty dark line below it. So all you can do when a squall is approaching is get your sails ready and then just hang out and kind of watch it come and wait to see what happens. just the beginning. Things were about to get much, much windier and more intense in about mm, 30 seconds. Ah! I can't give you a number on how strong the wind was going because my anemometer broke when I was in the Bermuda Triangle. I'm not kidding. But once my sails were completely down, I turned downwind and I was getting blown downwind with no sails up and no engine on at four knots. In fact, the wind was so strong, I set my GoPro up on the stanchion, and it has a little, um, it's a clamp with those little balls that kind of connect together so you can turn it in any way, and a wave hit it and cracked one of the balls, and the whole camera fell down. And for the rest of the trip, and until I get a new one, I have to use a piece of rope to tie the camera up so that it doesn't fall over, because now the connection of the balls is broken. But Initially, I was just going to try to put a double reef in the main because I thought, oh, you know, it'll give me some steerage at least. So I was up there kind of messing around with that. That's when the wave hit and the camera fell over. And then I realized that it was just too windy even for a double reef. So I pulled the whole main down and went back into the cockpit, turned my boat downwind, which luckily was the direction I wanted to be going anyway, and just steered with the waves and the wind and honestly if this had been a storm or a gale that lasted for days I would have hated it and it would have been exhausting but once all my sails were down I knew it was going to be fine and it was kind of fun I feel so alive when the weather is crazy and it's a little bit cold and the rain is hitting my skin and the wind is on my face and it's me and the elements and my boat and it's just really exciting, especially when you know that it's going to be over in less than an hour. That's the key point of that excitement and fun. <laughs> Thank you.
This is like leaving Grenada all over again. God damn it. I don't know why I had such horrible timing. Honest to God, I've been watching the weather and it looked great <laughs> up until this morning. Um, but then I had to go because I have to get to Panama in time to get my mom. I'm already cutting it a bit. But, well, right now I'm going two and a half knots with a double reef to Maine and no head sail. <laughs> so that's good, I guess. Well, now that I've peed my pants, I think it's time to put the rest of the mainsail up because I think the worst of this is over. That was nuts. That was fucking nuts. Holy shit. I was going four knots with no sails up. Just bare poles. <laughs> That's a new record for me. God damn. Still haven't caught a fish yet. What the fuck, fish? I thought you were supposed to bite in the rain. Clearly, everyone was lying and just trying to get people to not hate fishing in the rain. Maybe one day I'll master the art of leaving when it's sunny with a steady breeze. Today is not the day. Well, the wind's finally filled in. It's four o'clock. The wind is definitely picking up. Morning. But as the finally sun turned it off starts to get sailing, lower, but it's, also it's not supposed to be coming at more than 15 to 20. It's actually so kind of nice. It should be a really good night of sailing, sailing once we to get and lots of nice deep 20 minute naps. <laughs> I'm sitting here with my tea. Of the trip. It's shaping up to, to be a really look. nice wind. About I'm making um, awesome speed. The sky doesn't look too horrible behind me. I can still see land. And I'm hoping it's gonna be a good night. It's the wind. Is Modern romance. I wanted to listen to Harry Potter, but um, my phone decided to delete all the music and audiobooks that were on it right before I left for this trip. So I'm listening to this instead, which I am taking notes on. Um, apparently, texting is confusing and it's not like it used to be, but.
I just did my final deck check before I set down for my naps for the night. Everything looks good so far. There's a little bit of cloud behind me, but before the sun set, I looked and it, um, it doesn't look like storm. It just looks more like general clouds, so I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I just made my bed, so that's... I didn't really think when I put all the fruit here that it was going to be in the way of my iPad and phone for the alarm, but I'll just work around that. Not a big deal. This is one of my favorite games to play. It's called Where the Fuck Is That Noise Coming From? Every time the boat heals, and I'm at sea, something I is rattling, the and I, I don't, don't know what world. it is. It is, is something in just here? really good. I feel so fulfilled by just being underway, and I feel like I'm accomplishing something by no, it's definitely me moving through space on my boat that I can, without any guilt, just lie in the sun and read my book. And in regular life, if I'm lazy, it always comes with a guilty feeling so that I shouldn't be doing back. work. Sea is the only place where I can really just completely relax. Morning one. It's pretty rolly. I'm just hanging on. It's a really nice morning. I had a really nice amount of sleep last night. No squalls, no sudden gusts of wind. Everything just relaxing and restful. Because I, without any guilt, can just lie down all day long, partially in the sun, eat snacks, and do whatever lazy, fun things I feel like doing. And it's awesome. Just me and the sea. One part, of, one part of going downwind I'm not crazy about is that the boat just rocks back and forth pretty constantly and it can be tricky. But the nice thing is that it's a Everything back kind and of forth slows down after a couple days at sea and I start to appreciate harsher every small moment when things are going well. So life is really it. peaceful. I've never sailed on a schedule before and it's kind of interesting to experience. Normally, I would be super happy with the wind right now. As long as my boat is able to steer itself, I won't turn on the engine because as soon as the engine goes on, sailing becomes a chore rather than just the most awesome thing you could possibly do with your life. And instead, I find myself sitting here scheming and calculating and trying to figure out, okay, so if I have the engine on and I'm averaging five knots for four hours, then as long as, as I'm 300 miles out from the get-go with, with four days left, then I can average three knots if the wind's totally dead, which is all you can do if the wind's totally dead. It's definitely adding a little bit of an excitement to the sail. So, for those of you who are curious, this is my trip. I started here in Curacao and sailed out up over Aruba 
The reason for that is that this is Venezuela and I didn't want to get too close to it. And I want to keep some distance from the shore because there's better wind. And right now I am here. Um, this says I have 470 miles to go, which took about four and a half days. That's fine. And end goal is Panama. I'm heading into Puerto Lindo where I can do part of my clear-in and then I have to take the bus somewhere else, but that's fine. And right now I'm about on the same longitude as Haiti, which is kind of cool. Also the same longitude. Oh, I think I'm finally further west than where I started in Maine, which is really funny. I want to share with you guys a trick that's revolutionized my world. My friend AJ in Curacao showed this to me. So my biggest complaint about Navionics is that it doesn't have a night mode. And as you can see, there's a lot of white going on here, so it's super bright. And I haven't really been able to figure out a solution, but he told me, maybe this is obvious to some of you, but it wasn't to me. You can invert the colors if you go general and then accessibility and then invert colors and go back to Navionics and now you have night mode. It doesn't dazzle your eyes anymore. So this has totally changed my life every night. It's really awesome. So thank you AJ for that one. And third night, the wind's filled in enough that my boat is sailing pretty happily. The clouds are really cool. Nothing looks dark and squally, but from this side, there's definitely squall potential, so I'll be keeping an eye on that as it gets darker because I have my pole out and that is going to make things much more complicated. I do nap during the day a little bit, and certainly on longer passages, I would sort of develop more of a day or night sleeping schedule. But on something that's only a week long, um, it's harder for me to get myself out of the habit of sleeping at night. Oftentimes, at around three or four in the morning, I think uh, about how I should make a sail change, joking. but I wait until I was it not. gets late. Unfortunately, and then the act I of getting up and actually doing that sail change this, wakes me up enough that hit. I can't keep sleeping. Taking down the pole gets harder with the more Worth wind you're facing because basically, as soon as the boat end is detached, it becomes really a battering ram squalls. attached to a flogging it's sail. I have started to finesse the process of getting it down, and the biggest thing I've found is to lead the jib sheet forward to the so that as soon as the pole's down, I'm able to sheet in and sort of control the sail from where really I am. It's hard to do anything with the pole and the squall, but this is what I'm facing this morning. I'm just kind of waiting for it to get closer to my boat to see what sort of wind I'm looking at, and then I'll strike sail accordingly, but I'm guessing Having I'm going to really have to really take down the sail and sail. And the squall approach, which, which is fine. I feel really like I pulled in that it. Although sometimes I do have to end up pulling the main down too, yeah. but it's a lot less scary. I just want to go back to sleep. The squall was particularly Bad. beautiful because the sun the was actually behind rising these guys. behind it. So even though I was grumpy about having to be up to when I didn't to want to be, I was pretty glad that I got to see it because it was magnificent and also big. So, you know, important to make sure that the boat is doing okay. But mostly, I just love to see the juxtaposition of the dark, stormy clouds and the really bright sun shining through them. Here comes the first layer of more wind leading edge of the squall. It's pretty far away still and the wind's already picked up so I'm feeling good about my decision to strike the head so it's always nice
calling this one the breakfast squall because I should be sleeping right now. But instead I'm watching this bad beast Normally when it gets closer, eating an early breakfast. Light on the other and it's also actually really catch, pretty squall. It looked threatening at first, but I think it's going to be longer be than you wanted. So this one, this one, the left so side of it, the trailing yeah, side, I can already cool. see light through, it's but there's a really dark section towards the front with a really nasty Damn, low the roll black is so bad. I have to gimbal my, my legs tables so my apple slices don't fall off of it. And then if you look up top in a squall, it often has really What's pretty puffy clouds right above it. Oh yeah. And sometimes I just try to focus on those and pretend that the stuff underneath isn't gonna hit me. Bon. Now there's starting to be significant thunder coming out of breakfast squall. I don't know that I like the looks of it. But I like the looks of this side. Oh, happy clouds. It's kind of cool when squalls are so big they have their own wind patterns. So this one, I was going wing and wing, dead downwind. But as this squall is approaching me, I'm now almost on a beam reach. I'm, I have to keep edging up. And that's usually when they're really large, they kind of swirl the air around them and create their own little atmosphere. This, so what I do when I have look, a big squall, squall turned out to actually to not be that bad it. at all. It just looked fierce. And after it was over, I even was rewarded with a nice little rainbow in one of the clouds. And the day just got better from there. It stayed pretty nice and sunny, and there were even more surprises for me in the future. As I'm sitting here waiting for breakfast squall to hit, I just want to talk about peanut butter for a second. I'm a big advocate for crunchy peanut butter, but sometimes I buy it in foreign language and accidentally get creamy. Like this, for instance, is creamy peanut butter, but I don't really know how to tell because I don't speak Dutch, so it's still pretty good. There are sort of chunks in it, like small chunks, but ultimately, I'm a crunchy girl through and through. So if you're seeing my creamy peanut butter and judging me, crunchy people, just know that I'm in your court. And if you're creamy people, you're seeing my peanut butter and you're like, hell yeah, creamy. Uh-uh, that is not my jam. Oh, here comes the squall. I caught another mahi. It's not as big as my first one, but it's way more uh, one person size, so that's good. I'm just going to take my now incredibly long gaff. Here he is. On the hook. And let's get this puppy aboard. Okay, I have two bowls of fish. This one is for cooking up for dinner. And this one is cut into strips and it's currently salting to be hung up in a couple hours once the salt's all killed all the bacteria. Out, I finally cleaned all the fish out of my cockpit and off of myself, I think. Fish, fresh from the seas. Afternoon of day four, fish is delish, other fish is salting, I'll probably string it up before it gets dark tonight, and then the last time it only took about 24 hours before I was able to start eating it. And according to my electronic iPad navigator, I have three more days to go, as long as this wind holds. I mean, I 
yeah, I guess Thanks it's for watching the first part of my eight day trip to Panama. I have a ton of footage because I got into a lot of storms towards the second part. So I'm doing this in, I think, two parts. Um, definitely more than one. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so that you can see scenes like this. <laughs> My second half of the trip definitely got way more intense with interesting squalls, lightning storms, all sorts of weird everything. So like my channel, it does help me if you subscribe and like and share with your friends and thank you all for your lovely comments. So last uh, video that I uploaded, I gave to my sister-in-law Tish before I left and she uploaded it while I was at sea. So when I got in, I sat down and read through all the comments that you guys had written on the video. And oh my god, so I was so tired <laughs> and totally worn out and just lying on the settee and every single comment was so nice and it just made me all warm and fuzzy inside and I'm really worried it's gonna go straight to my head and make me into a giant egotist but keep them coming. <laughs> so thank you guys for all of your really nice comments, I like them so much. I have a Patreon account, patreon.com slash windhippie if you want to support me on there. I do really appreciate it and thank you all of my patrons who are already supporting me you guys are awesome I also have an Instagram page at boat lizard and I post photos a couple times a week and stories so if you want more of what I'm doing you can go on there and see more things <laughs> Thank you, Tish, for uploading these videos for me every week. I put them on Dropbox, which is a really good way to upload large files if you have an intermittent connection, because a lot of other sites will restart the upload if the connection blips, which mine always does. So, thank you guys for watching, and subscribing, and liking, and commenting, and all of the lovely things that you do that make me really happy, and I hope these videos make you happy. And I'll see you guys next week. Oh, fuck. I remembered there was... Okay. Um, the song that I sang in the sunset scene <laughs> was uh, Sunset Soon Forgotten by Iron and Wine. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks with another full-length video.